As Chrome's biggest defender, I'll admit, today kind of sucks. The end is near, and the future of uBlock Origin isn't looking particularly bright. I want to go in-depth on what happened here. I'm a Chrome extension author, a Linux privacy nerd, as you can see from my framework laptop and my Ubuntu installation. But more importantly, I'm a big nerd about all things privacy, advertising, and the web. And I think it's important to understand why these changes are happening, how it's going to affect you, and what the future of Chrome looks like. But before we can do that, we need to understand Manifest V2 versus V3. Before we can talk about that, a quick word from today's sponsor, me. We're doing a lot more of these breaking news videos, and as much as I love the current sponsors, believe me, I do, not all of them are down to get these really quick turnaround times. So if you're okay with not approving a script way ahead and getting a discounted rate in order to get into these breaking news videos, hit me up, youtube at t3.gg. Anyways. As I mentioned before, we need to understand Manifest V2 versus V3. These are the two different versions of what is effectively your configuration for an extension. This is a standard that isn't just a thing in Chrome, by the way. This is supported in Firefox as well in attempts to try and make a universal standard for extensions. And Manifest V2 was a little, uh, a little too flexible. The goal with the move to Manifest V3 by Chrome is to try and patch up some of those absurdly wide permissions and make things both safer and faster for all Chrome users. There's been a lot of spyware spreading around via Chrome extensions on V2, and V3 should hopefully address the vast, vast majority of those issues. So what has actually changed? Let's go through it. From this original announcement from 2020, by the way, this has been a long time in the making. One of the biggest changes is that Manifest V3 will not allow you to remotely host code. All the code has to actually be in the extension itself, which means making changes on the fly is much harder because you have to wait for the extension to be approved. But it also means it's much easier for them to audit it and make sure the code is safe. They also are strict about not obfuscating the code. They said over 70% of the Chrome extensions that were malicious were obfuscated. So now you can only minify it. And they were clear you can still minify the code. You just can't obfuscate it. You can't intentionally make the code impossible to read and understand. The performance stuff's actually really cool too. They fundamentally changed how the background logic works. The big thing is service workers. Instead of a background page, which is literally a separate HTML page that runs, triggers its own JS and does whatever else for every single extension, by the way. So you're running all these different isolates nonstop. It's terrible. Now you can run service workers. So you don't need the HTML. You don't need this weird background page pattern that spins up way more resources. You can just have a service worker, which is a mini JS thread that we can already use for building stuff in the web. Now you could use that for your extensions, which should be significantly more performant. They also fundamentally change a bunch of the APIs, one of which we're going to go very in depth on, which is the network analysis API, in order to make them a little more fine grained, but also much, much, much more performant. The declarative net request one in particular, we'll be going deep into. So hopefully we understand a bit of why Manifest V3 is happening now. It's to try and reduce the, both the performance issues that come from Chrome extensions, as well as the security issues inherent to the existing model. But these changes disproportionately affect ad block solutions. And I want to go into what this looks like. The best way, as always, is to keep up with what Gorehill is doing. In this case, uBlock Origin Lite. Ublock Origin Lite's a permissionless MV3 API-based content blocker. It's entirely declarative, which means there is no need for a permanent uBlock Origin Lite process for the filtering to occur. This is both what is cool about uBlock Origin Lite and uh, Manifest V3, as well as what kind of sucks. It's important to understand how this declarative net request API works. Previously, the API that you would use to access web requests to do things like ad blocking would give you access to the entire request and the response, and you would process that in JavaScript. So every single request your browser makes would be analyzed by your extension that has that permission to see it and say, hey, I don't know if I want to do that. Hey, I want to cancel that request. Eh, pass that one along. This is both a huge performance hit because literally every single request your browser makes has to go through this JavaScript before it can actually finish the request. And it's a huge security issue because now your extension sees every single thing your browser is doing. If it's a trusted open source extension like uBlock, you're good to go. But if it's a sketchier one like AdBlock or AdBlock Plus, who knows what's happening to that data? I've seen some sketchy shit. You should probably avoid those. But the declarative net request API solves this. And the way it solves that is by being a traditional declarative filter. By declarative, what they mean is that instead of running some JavaScript code on every single request and making a decision when the request comes through, 
you declare which requests are and aren't allowed. So now you have to include a giant, effectively a JSON file that configures which requests are and aren't allowed as part of the extension. This is much easier to do in a performant and safe way because there is no code being executed by the extension now. uBlock Origin Lite doesn't run JavaScript to figure out if a request should go through or not. Instead, this list is provided to the browser, which can then block on a native layer. So Node.js is running, which should allow this to both use way less memory and be way more performant, but most importantly, significantly safer. But that does mean there's a handful of features that we're probably used to using something like uBlock Origin that you're not going to get. You're not going to get the fancy right-click remove element stuff because this is just being used for the like blocking of requests now. You're not going to get per site scripting changes the way we could before. You aren't going to have dynamic filtering and URL filtering where like on URLs, you can set different conditions and permissions in different states with different things inside of them. Everything has to be declarative through these new rules that are being defined in this declarative way. And you can see this if you look through the code. You just go to Chromium, Rule Sets, Generic Rule Set. And here we see defaults in all of these URLs that are going to be blocked by default. And there's a whole bunch of these. And all of these sets of domains are used in the build process to create an extension that includes, I think it's like 27,000 or so rules of what should be blocked always. When the proposal for Manifest V3 first happened, they had a hard limit of 30,000 rules per extension. And some people were working around that by installing multiple extensions. So you'd have like part one, part two, part three extensions, which is weird. They bumped it to 300K. But what's interesting is that uBlock Origin Lights only got 17K when using the optimal or complete modes, which is not that many rules in the end. So it's fine. I do like this question that was in here. Is uBlock Origin Lite a bad faith attempt at converting uBlock Origin to manifest v3? No. My goal with uBlock Origin Lite is a reliable and efficient MV3 compliant content blocker, leveraging the filter lists used by uBlock Origin. I'm satisfied that I fulfilled that goal by ensuring uBlock Origin Lite was entirely declarative, though at the cost of limitations beyond those intrinsic to MV3. The service worker is not required to initiate network, cosmetic, or scriptlet-based filtering in a timely manner, because again, it's entirely declarative. If you didn't know this, there's actually some issues on the old uBlock Origin on MV2 in Chrome, because Chrome would try and get your browser page to resolve before it let the extensions finish, which caused a race condition that was particularly rough. As Gorhill says here, for Chromium-based browsers specifically, MV3 will actually allow you to properly filter at browser launch, which isn't the case for MV2-based content blockers. He has a whole post all about this, which I thought was really interesting. This is like fun history of ad block details. Firefox will wait for uBlock Origin to be ready before sending network requests from the already open tabs at browser launch. In Chromium browsers, that's not the case. Tracker and advertisement payloads may find their way into already open tabs before uBlock Origin is ready while Firefox will properly filter them. Reliably blocking at browser launch is especially important for whoever uses default deny mode for third-party resources or JS. A setting's available in Chrome, but it's disabled by default to allow for extensions to block the page loads, but like no one has that enabled. There's also prefetching, which is blocked in Firefox, but not in Chrome, and Wasm, which is a fun one too. The reason Wasm's not used in the Chrome version is because if Wasm was being used, there is yet another permission that has to be allowed in the extension manifest, which could theoretically get Google to block a push yet again. There's a whole issue here detailing how strict Chrome could be about these things. Wish to be able to use WebAssembly for my extension. It's already the case for the Firefox version. However, I don't plan to use Wasm unsafe eval if or when it becomes available, as this goes against the spirit of not executing remote code. What's the reason that Chromium can't allow loading of Wasm modules from same origin response objects? This would solve the issue of loading and executing only same origin Wasm code. So the issue with Wasm is technically the way that Chrome implemented it. You could execute Wasm binaries from anywhere, which would be huge for obfuscation and installing viruses via extensions. So they decided to try and avoid all of that. So... As you can see, poor Gorehill has been suffering a lot trying to support the best possible ad blocking flows inside of Chrome. And now I'm going to drop the controversial take that's probably going to get me into a bit of trouble. And I know if I look at the comments, it's going to be everyone. <laughs> I don't think Chrome is doing this in bad faith. I genuinely do not believe the goal of the Chrome team here is to allow their ads to go through more reliably. I've seen a lot of controversy around this. I've seen a lot of conspiracy, a lot of weird shit from people who are trying to push this idea 
that Chrome's only making these changes because they want to remove ad blocks from the internet. You would be amazed at how few users are using ad blocks when it comes to percentages of the web, especially on mobile, because mobile is a huge portion of traffic on the internet now. It's the majority, if I recall. And more importantly, it's where most of the money transfers happening on the web nowadays too. Because of that, these changes in Chrome don't really meaningfully affect Google's advertising profile. And on top of that, the fact that the MV3 content blockers allow you to block on launch means that they're getting even less tracking information than they were prior. So I really don't believe that this is a thing the Chrome team is doing because Google said, hey guys, it's time to make sure our ads actually run. And I understand why it looks like that. But the Chrome team doesn't really do what is best for Google in that sense very often. The positioning of the Chrome team has always been advance the tools of the web as far as we can in order to make the web a more viable platform. Chrome doesn't exist because Google wants to own the web. Chrome exists because Google wants to focus on the web. They don't want to keep making these shitty desktop apps like Google Earth that they have to maintain forever. If they could put everything in the browser, then the world would be a better place. Chrome exists because Gmail did better than anyone expected. And their whole goal with this is to improve the browser experience in order to have it be as great a place to do real work as possible. Google doesn't win if they serve a slightly higher percentage of ads. Google wins if the internet is where we go to do things. And if we open up Chrome or Firefox or Edge or Arc or Ladybird, but we use them to go to our Google Workspaces account, we use them to go to YouTube, we use them to do all these things on the internet, which is where Google has positioned themselves, then Google still wins. Google loses money on Chrome because their goal is to push the web itself forward. And Manifest V3 is more than anything their attempt to make Chromebooks look less like virus destroyed machines. Things like this change significantly reduce the, the bad vibes many have on Chrome because they see a Chromebook that a kid used just full of viruses, all Chrome extension hacks. Hell, my sister's MacBook got destroyed with hacky Chrome bullshit like this. It's very common, and the Manifest V3 efforts make lives for the existing ad blocks slightly harder in favor of making Chrome and as such the entire web much safer and more performant. And if anything, as I mentioned before, since these now block on launch, it might actually hurt the numbers that Chrome sees long term too in terms of the ads being played. The only thing I don't see that being easy to work around here is a uh, YouTube ad blocking, which was absolutely going to be a problem with V3. I'm not sure what that story is going to look like just yet. That's going to be interesting. But I really don't think V3 is some crazy attempt to try and make the web full of ads again. It seems much more, I don't like the word noble for it, but focused on handling another PR issue that Google has with all these viruses and shit. Great question from chat. When is V3 entering into force? I believe beginning of next year is when we're going to start seeing V2 deprecation. Not positive, but that's what I've, I recall seeing. That's the plan. And that's why we're starting to get the warning. For what it is worth, Firefox has confirmed they will not be disabling V2. Firefox has no plans to deprecate Manifest version 2 and will continue to support MV2 extensions for the foreseeable future. Arc has also made a statement. We will keep Manifest V2 for as long as it's still available in Chromium. We expect to drop support in June 2025, but we may maintain it longer or be forced to drop support for it sooner, depending on the precise nature of the changes in the code. In June 2025 is the date that Google plans to completely drop V2 support. Fun. One more important detail in terms of the flaws with the V3 model and the declarative way of doing things is there are a lot of sites that you're not going to be able to work around via JavaScript hacks. Something like a news site that will notice that you have an ad block running, it's going to notice now and it's going to give you this wonderful screen where it might not have before. That's probably the biggest problem you're going to run into because again, they would previously run JavaScript to try and hack around all of this stuff. Now they're not. Now they're just blocking the URLs outright. So for most situations, most of the time, this is going to be fine. As Goral says here, if you use uBlock Origin as an install and forget content blocker, Lite should be fine, but you will have to explicitly install it, which is also why we're not getting a direct update in Chrome. One more quick thing, because I have a feeling this is going to be more common now that there are more extensions and more options. 
don't use multiple ad blockers. I've seen a lot of people do this where they have like three or four installed. Please don't do this. It's so bad. Gorilla has a whole thread showing just how bad it is and like how many performance issues can occur, how different websites can break as a result of it. It's really bad. It's really bad. There's a lot of examples of people having massive performance issues, having YouTube break, having YouTube ad blockers fail. But when they uninstall the other ad blocks and just have you block, it all works. Gorehill knows what he's doing. If you're not already following him, give him a follow. Keep an eye on these things. There is no better person to cover this stuff. Interesting that Brave has a workaround here. The following extensions are no longer supported by Chrome, but they can be installed in Brave. Click their name to download and install them. It's hilarious because they won't be on the Chrome web store anymore. So the solution here is to just give you a direct like install. We'll see how long they're able to support that. I think that's all I got. How are you feeling though? Are you staying on Chrome or is this the push you needed to move off? Let me know in the comments and until next time, peace nerds.